let me introduce you to the story about Domero He Zapata. In 1942, Zapata came as a part of the Bracero program, a program implemented by the US in the absence of cheap labor. 1942 was a time of war. Battles were raging on in Europe, and the US was quickly swept into the fray after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Since most American nationals were off fighting the war, the US mainland experienced a labor shortage that only women and immigrants could fill. Zapata was a part of the Braceros, a group of immigrants from Mexico which came to the US on temporary work visas. This was one of the first times the US utilized Mexican labor, thus opening its doors to a whole new market of workers. These workers would began to shape American society. You see, the story did not end with World War II and the Bracero program, for that program would be quickly dissolved after the fighting stopped. The Bracero program was a pioneering program, a trial run that proved that Mexican labor in the U.S. worked. Soon after, in 1953, the U.S. would establish its first Mexico work visa program. But there was just one problem. In both of these scenarios, there would lie an inherent exploitative mindset. Cases of racism ran rampant. In Texas, there were images like these. Discrimination was commonplace. Exploitation became the everyday. Clearly, there was a problem. But how did this problem get solved? Fast forward a few decades, and we arrive at NAFTA. The gold standard of trade, as Bill Clinton called it in an NBC interview. NAFTA was a reopening of the US market towards the outside world. It linked the US, Mexico, and Canada closer together than ever before. And yet a key question needed to be asked, what about the migrant worker? When Bill Clinton signed NAFTA in 1994, were people like Zapeta on his mind? Perhaps we'll never know, but 23 years later, the impact of NAFTA on the migrant worker has become astoundingly clear. So today, we will ask that question, what about the migrant worker? Today, we will embark on a journey to explore the realms of NAFTA, the migrant worker, and the U.S.-Mexico economy, drawing connections between NAFTA's larger economic impact and its impact on the Mexican-American workforce. We will examine the good, the bad, and the ugly. And at the center of it all will be the individuals who keep the U.S. engine running. For the specific sake of this issue, I will limit this topic down to only covering Mexican migrant workers, not mentioning ones from Canada. My presentation will be split into three parts. I will first examine the macroeconomic impact of NAFTA and then talk about the impact it has had on the migrant worker and finally conclude by demonstrating exactly why NAFTA has harmed these workers in the long run. So first, let's begin. What is NAFTA? NAFTA stands for the North American Free Trade Agreement, originally signed by Bill Clinton in 1994, and it involved three countries, the US, Canada, and Mexico. Had three main goals. Lower tax and trade barriers between the three countries, expand the US market in North America, and allow regulation to be more easily enforced. It did so by lowering taxes and tariffs between the three countries, thereby encouraging businesses to trade and export and expand across national borders. And for the most part, it worked. A study done by the Center for Economic Policy and Research showed that between 1995 and 2015, trade between the US and Mexico rose by $270 billion. Subsequently, NAFTA also produced 1.1 million new jobs. This was all good news for the Mexican worker, right? New jobs and a growing economy were bound to help the people of Mexico. However, here is where we arrive at the bad and the ugly. On the surface, NAFTA seemed to benefit the Mexican worker with more job availabilities and more money being put into the economy. But in actuality, that money and those jobs were an illusion. In fact, these Mexican workers faced a much harsher reality. As the giant US corporations rolled into the Mexican landscape, set free by NAFTA's lowering of tax barriers, local producers began to suffer. A simple fact backed their demise. The local producers had no way of competing against a large manufacturing plant. A family farm could not produce more products than a factory, nor lower its prices like a factory does. Therefore, a study cited by The Atlantic showed that between 1995 and 2005, more than 4.9 million Mexican family farmers left their homes in search of work. An examination into the agricultural sector of the Mexican economy makes this fact even more apparently clear. Corn has always been a staple of the US economy, uh, of the Mexican economy, which according to USDA ranks number four in corn production around the world. However, 
Between 1993 and 2000, the price of corn dropped and the number of corn producers dropped simultaneously. This was because local producers could no longer compete with these large manufacturing companies who produced so much corn so much faster. Thus, they were driven to bankruptcy. These millions of families now had to find new jobs and cope with the fact that their entire li livelihood has been destroyed because of NAFTA. So what about the 1.1 million new jobs that I mentioned? Surely an increase in jobs would, inc would benefit the Mexican workers. Well, not exactly. These jobs were created in so-called maquiladoras, a term used to describe factories lying along the border propped up by NAFTA's policies. These factories did not provide a friendly environment. In fact, it provided the exact opposite. Catherine Copenhagen's book, Desert Capitalism, tells us exactly what kind of conditions were in these factories. It tells us the story of Ana Garcia Martinez. The atmosphere was distinct, she said. The blood, sweat, and tears of those Mexican men and women who toiled under a 12-hour-a-day policy who could take no breaks from their monotonous rhythm. That was hell. That was hell. I'm fortunate to have found a job elsewhere, but I pray for my fa fellow friends who are still there now. Martinez used to be a dairy farmer, another industry affected by NAFTA. Her small dairy farm in Coahuila ran out of business after a nestle plant moved into her neighborhood. After she ran out of business, this is where she had to work. Because of the lack of federal oversight from both the U.S. and Mexican governments, these factories could abuse their workers and get away without any repercussions. So although these 1.1 million jobs exist, they exist in the most terrible conditions. So now we arrive at the ultimatum. Is NAFTA economically good or bad for the migrant worker? Well, the answer is quite nuanced. While workers are being forced out of their homes into terrible work conditions, their jobs give them enough income to send remittances back to their families to help them survive. These remittances value a total of $24.6 billion, which is Mexico's biggest source of cash flow, according to Forbes. This is a positive in contrast to the negatives of economic detriment and discrimination. However, what is unquestionably fact is the fact that these migrant workers are being exploited, brutally exploited. So really, pointing out these facts isn't what matters the most. Lawmakers in the US and Mexico know these loopholes exist about NAFTA. They see these migrant workers lose their livelihood and their homes. They see how crowded these factories are. What has been halting progress on this issue is not the fact that the question is ambiguous. It's the fact that these lawmakers do not care. They don't believe that the story of these migrant workers, that the story of someone like Adomero Zapeta matter. So why should you care? Because the story of these migrant workers is the story of you. Zabeta did not trek thousands of miles to arrive on a farm and toil for several years just for the sake of survival. These three million migrant workers currently residing all throughout the US have shaped the American identity. Not only is their existence a testament to the American dream, but make an extreme contribution to the US economy and the lives of every individual. So the real question is not whether or not NAFTA is beneficial or harmful for the migrant worker. It is rather this. Is it fair that those who produce our food get little of their own? Is it fair that while migrant labor contributes $743 billion to the U.S. economy, migrant workers earn an average of 11000 a year, which is a rate close to the poverty line? Is it fair that the migrant worker is, is the cornerstone the U.S. economy and yet is often forgotten or ignored in discussion? The answer to all of the above is no. Zapeta's story is now posted at the UCLA Labor Center, preserved on the granite wall of a multimedia exhibit shaped in time and in history. Him and so many like him deserve a stage, an audience, a voice. What we can do as a nation bound by human principle is to stand up for those, to those large corporations bolstered like, by policies like NAFTA to truly defend the Mexican workers, to defend people like Zapeta, and to tell the story of the forgotten. Thank you.